making the not so obvious obvious. This video is part of Shut Up and Shoot, that famous ebook, you know, the one you should be getting now. All right, so here we're going to cover uh, bringing in an image sequence for the purpose of a time lapse sequence that you probably shot with your Canon T2i, for example, or maybe your 7D or 5D Mark II. Basically, what the object is, is to bring in the sequence of images just like we did in many other tutorials that you can find online for this ebook for under After Effects or Premiere Pro. But I'm going to show you how you do that in Sony Vegas. So I'm just going to click on a little folder here under Project Media that says Import Media. And I'm already set in that directory uh, where I have a sequence of images that can be imported. Now this is kind of important because these are JPEGs. If you recall or if you happen to watch the uh, tutorial on After Effects and image sequences you'll know that in After Effects there was stuff that showed up here and what that stuff was was basically uh, nope Sony doesn't have it it doesn't allow for camera raw it has red raw but not camera raw so in essence Sony doesn't know how to read raw files but this would be a raw file and it just it does not recognize it it does not recognize it so don't even try to load your raw files go to your JPEGs and automatically it understands JPEGs it knows that it is one file because we don't have the sequence clicked but it will actually figure out that there is a sequence there so make sure you turn on open still sequence and click on the first image and then click on open and now it comes up with a quick screen of properties and this is where you can actually give this a name if you want I usually don't because it's not important because I'm only going for the render of these images. The attributes are 5184 by 3456. That is the actual image size coming out of your camera. Uh, this kind of tells you what frame rate you want to bring it in at. So if we're doing NTSC, we want to do 2997. If we're doing film, we want to do 24. If we're doing PAL, the European standard, we want to do 25. And it's progressive. It has to be progressive. These are individual still frames, so you got to keep them progressive. Pixel aspect ratio is 1.0. Yes, because that's how it comes, and you want to keep that aspect ratio correct. Alpha channel, we don't have one because JPEGs don't have alpha channels. If you were bringing in PNGs with a 32-bit color depth, then you would have the possibility of bringing straight unmatted, pre-multiplied, or pre-multiplied dirty. Hmm, dirty. Anyways, uh, you could bring in uh, the clips with alpha channel, which more color depth, which means you can actually key some stuff out and make transparencies, etc. All this other stuff is not applicable. The rotation, leave that on original, stereoscopic. We're not doing 3D, so we just want to bring this sequence in. Click OK. And now we have a sequence. And this is, it tells you, if I click on this, we're at 25 frames per second, 1507. Now that's fine and dandy, except that's not what I wanted. I need to have this brought in at 29.97 so I'm gonna bring it in again except this time I'm going to bring it oops let's delete this first Sony won't let you have multiples although I'm gonna try something I'm going to rename this to 25p sequence and now I'm going to bring in another 
Yep, open still sequence, open. No, it didn't like it. So you can only do one at a time. So we'll get rid of that. I'm going to bring it back in, click, open, open. And I need this to be 29.97. It's going to be 12 seconds and 22 frames. Okay, that's better. So now we drop that down into the timeline and we have ourselves a nice 29.97, 5184 by 3456. However, the properties of the project are 1920 by 1080. So by default, looking at this, you'll see that the imagery has been shrunk down to fit the 1920 by 1080. And this is m probably not what you want. So we need to fix that. And that's really easily done. All you need to do on a sequence like this is click on this little event pan crop icon on, on the actual clip itself. And this is going to open up a new little gadget that allows you to change the aspect ratio and literally crop this to what you need. So this little device here called lock aspect ratio and size about center, which means that basically it's going to contract equally in and out is to be turned off. That's the first step. Then for your width, you want to go back to the HD. So 1920 by 1080. So now we actually have an HD window. Now we can click back and turn this stuff back on. And now we can literally zoom out to HD size. Approximate. So now we have cropped our imagery to fit that 1920 by 1080 correctly. So we have a project at 1920 by 1080, the preview is 1920 by 1080, and we have a nice little shot here. Uh, you can do additional tweaks if you want. For example, if I want to move the image a little bit, I can just simply move the frame up within that image and now we're happy or if I want to get a zoom in on a flower I could do that and let me just show you what that looks like this is all real time by the way so now I've zoomed in on the flower and I'm going to bring up and pop this guy out again and I'm going to pop this guy out again so that you can actually see this stuff happening in real time watch this stuff back here as I do stuff here and as you can see it's in real time so again this is how you select and do uh, a, a still frame image sequence in Sony Vegas there are some limitations. You cannot, uh, for example, render out 4K, uh, even 2K at the current time. I know, I believe it's in the plans, but it's not there yet. Sony does have limitations. But basically, let's assume you're ready to rock and roll. You, you're happy with your clip. Just basically select it. Or if it's the only clip, you don't even need to do that. Go to render to new track. And again, it will load the codec list. Needs to breathe a little bit. It's got a lot of data there. And of course, you want to make sure that you render it to the correct place. So we'll go down to our stock footage. Demo out. Time lapse image sequence. And then, of course, you need to collect and, and, and pick the correct codec. So, again, what do you want to do? Uh, it's going to be a quick time. So I need to go and make quick time. And then I also need to select what I want as far as the output. 
and in this particular case I could go photo JPEG progressive 91 percent quality whatever have you uh, and if you look back at the prior videos you'll remember that we can set these up to however we want but it's kind of important that you pick the correct one so that the dimensions or the resolution is always correct and then simply click render and off she goes and this might take a little while Sony does crunch pretty quick it's pretty decent it's a 64-bit application and it does a decent job so go have a coffee because this is rendering and we all know what that means let it rip <laughs>